Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about how to create a QR code generator app. We will provide some string data to our application and our application will generate a respective QR code for that. I know this sounds a little bit complex, but trust me, it is a very simple process. You just need to integrate one API call and you are done. So is it's that simple. So for now, let's get started. So here I am in one Git project where we'll be using this API. QR code generator. So thanks to the contributors, they have made it super easy to hit this API and get our QR code uh, ready. It asks, uh, it has this URL, qr code generator and this uh, code w, uh, app and we can use this API, uh, this API, and we can pass this data. We can pass any string which we want to integrate as a in the in that QR code and we can also uh, send some style and the background color and fill color as well to customize the barcode as you can see in the image here so we'll be using this api to generate our qr code now i have already integrated that in my postman so you can see that from here uh, here is a here i have put that url that is a, and that is a git type and in the data parameter i have put this is my string and if I click on send, uh, we uh, the response comes as a QR code. If you are able to see a QR code is here in the response body. So this API directly sends us QR code in the form of SVG. So we need to handle that SVG. So that is also one of the things that we are going to learn in this tutorial. So now let's go to our Android Studio. Yeah, this is the blank Android Studio. I have just configured a data binding here, nothing else. And yes, uh, there are some layout items I have already added. Uh, first one is uh, edit text to take the input of the data from user. This is a button to generate a QR, and uh, that is it will start hitting the API and we'll get back the result. After we get back the result, we want to show the QR code to the user. That's why we have taken an image view here. In this image view, I have given a static width and height of 200 dp each. So that our QR will be clearly visible, and uh, we'll after we get the uh, API response, we will show the QR code in the in this image view. Now going to the main activity. <clears throat> so first of all, we need to uh, as we need to directly uh, deal with the SVG file. This API all uh, directly returns the SVG file as a QR code. So we need to uh, and we'll be using the retrofit uh, for the a networking request so but we cannot directly uh, uh, directly usually uh, directly use the retrofit as usual because it uh, generally deals with the json uh, parsing but in uh, here we need to uh, parse the svg as well for that we need to add some dependencies of svg so i have added those so i'll provide the uh, qr code uh, this link this link and the dependencies in the description box itself so uh, please do check that out and here the implement here is here are two libraries uh, for the retrofit this is the retrofit and this is a converter json library so actually that is uh, not needed here and here is a uh, one library that dependency that is com dot rock dot android svg so this library helps us to convert the, uh, the to uh, get the uh, convert the svg convert the string to the svg and this is the uh, another dependency com dot square dot retrofit so this is uh, a uh, retrofit uh, uh, retrofit dependency itself but uh, if you can see here in the json it is just like converter dot json dot json uh, which we generally use to pass json responses now as we want to pass the svg response that's why we have here converted dash scalars so, uh, so it will be a uh, uh, able to parse the SVG response. So after adding those, just sync your project and you are done. <coughs> so let me close this. Now, what we want to do, we first want to set an on click listener on this button. So we'll do that. Finding dot button generate QR dot set on click listener on this one. And here, after user clicks on this one, what we need to do, we need to make an API call. So for that, we can just use 
lifecyclescope.launch so that uh, our operation will happen in core routine but before that we need to set up the depth of it for that i'll just create a new file retrofit or first let's create api interface interface that will be an interface so this interface where we declare the all our uh, functions so this will be a suspend function get qr code and uh, this will be a get request and uh, let's hover again to this what it needs this is the base url and this one is the this further one is an endpoint so we need this endpoint slash api so i'll put it here slash api and further is a data it needs a data equals to something so that will be of string type and we'll here write query that will be a query parameter as this is a get request and it is a data or data colon string it will be a string type and it will return a response of string type because though that will be a svg but that is ultimately a string so that's why it will be a response of string now that's it that's the only function we need to create and uh, now let's create retrofit singleton instance that will be an object we'll create here valve api colon API in the, that will be of type API interface and we'll initialize this by lazy and here we'll return the retrofit object retrofit dot filter dot base URL of uh, uh, base URL will be this one I'll paste it here dot add converter factory now what we generally do in general examples we use a JSON converter here JSON converter factory dot create but here as we need to handle the response of svg we need scalars converter factory dot create and then dot build dot create service class that will be again api interface the class dot java and that's it our retrofit object is set uh, there is a type of here retrofit sorry retrofit okay Now again, I came in and main activity dot kt. Here now we can start making an API call. Val response equal to retrofit instance dot API dot get QR code. Here it requires a data in the form of string, and uh, which data we need to get? That is the data which you puts user, which user put in this edit text kt input data. So I'll pass it here binding dot et input data dot text dot to string so whatever the user will enter here that will be captured by this uh, uh, data binding expression and it will be sent to this api and it will uh, make the api call and get us the response after we get the response we'll check if response dot is successful if the response is successful then only we need to proceed else we can just show a toast message that uh, error parsing response okay if the response is successful then what what we need to do we need to take the svg image and we need to set it to the image view for that we need to do two things first one is a val svg equal to svg that is coming from android svg the dependency which we have added uh, android svg this dependency let me show you this android svg it is coming from this dependency svg dot get from string and what is our string that will be our response body response dot body 
that will be of type string now we will again create we need to create a drawable and then we will set this drawable to the image view drawable equal to is a picture drawable inside this one it requires picture so we will just write svg dot render to picture and now we can set this drawable to our image view so again binding dot img view generated qr so this is the same image view which we have created in our layout and we'll set this dot set image drawable and we'll pass this drawable here that's it that's the only thing we need to do and everything else will be handled by the libraries uh, like a rate of it and it android svg so now let's run our application and see what happens now our application is running and i'll put some string here what should i put okay this is qr code generated from my app okay i put a string and then i click on this generate qr okay it's crashed let us see what happened okay sorry this common mistake we developers do though it's just a silly mistake we need to add an internet permission with this permission internet okay when the rerun the application okay i'll put the same stick again this is a qr code generated from my app i'll just click on the generate qr and api call will take time and yes we are able to see the qr code now i need to scan this to verify that if we get the same string after scanning this so what i will do i will just take a screenshot of this one i will copy the clipboard this and here i have powerpoint open i will paste it here uh, sorry i think something mistake okay we we'll copy it copy to clipboard okay now i will paste it here okay and i'll crop it so that it will only contains this qr code okay and i'll again now save this as a picture uh, where should i say yeah in the download directory find my qr i have saved it now i have one website which scans the qr code online and gives shows you what is the scan data the here is that website here is we can upload the qr image and here it is saying that scan the qr code to view the results here okay now i'll just open the drawable and this is the same file my underscore qr i'll drag and drop here as soon as i drop here is the string it is showing this is a qr code generated from my app so this qr is uh, is reflecting the same string which we have put as an input uh, to make this qr so this qr contains exactly this string after we decode this qr we get the same string so this is how we can create an amazing qr code application uh, with very minimum efforts with the use of this free api and this api doesn't require it doesn't even requires an api key so you are free to use that so this is how qr code generator app works i hope that is very clear to you if not you can put your queries in your uh, comment box below i will try my best to answer those again if you like this video then please click on like share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you will be stay updated and whenever a new amazing video is published we'll meet in the next next tutorial with some other interesting topic till then goodbye happy coding